Just so I'm clear, we owe one of the best performance spaces in Toronto or Canada in Canada to a wrecking company run by Mo and Eddie Greenspan, yes. Moon, who in fact allowed us to have this great space. Yeah, they had real taste. That's like Ed Mervish, a guy who ran a cut rate retail store, mm. giving us the Royal Alex Theatre mm -hmm. as a community. I find it really interesting that, that you know, wreckers and cut rate, uh, cut rate retailers would in fact be giving us the great performance spaces. Yeah, and, and Ed, you know, he's a guy who, when he started up, when he bought the uh, Royal Alex, he phoned me at the Canadian Theatre Centre where I was working at the time and said he'd bought the thing and he was going to really get it going and whatnot and he was going to have a restaurant and uh, would I help him by get, get, getting together a whole bunch of photographs of, of uh, actors, uh, Toronto actors, that he could put up in the, uh, in the restaurant next to the Royal Alex. Well, I said, sure, so I don't know. Pile finally, you know, everybody who had ever been on stage. And he never forgot that. He always used to send me get free tickets, you know, to or wow. come and sit with him and Mrs. Uh, and uh, I, that, was, that taught me a lesson. I thought. Nobody's too big to say thanks again. Once Shane and you had climbed in the windows of this building and saw its potential. Mm. Then you went to the Green Spoons. And how much did it take to actually make the space into a, a, a space that would work a performance space? Well, we got some kind of an actual government grant uh, to fix the, uh, you know, the woodwork and the windows and put glass in them and whatnot. And then the rest of it, I, th I think I put together, oh, it's a, a small amount, it was like forty, fifty thousand 50000 or so, just to work on making it into a theater. Uh, I got the seats uh, by hiring a truck and driving out to a, a uh, little town near uh, Stratford where a theater was closing. And I bought a hundred seats for a dollar each, uh, put them on the truck, came back in here. And they were the original seats from the very high balcony in the Royal Alex. <laughs> and that's what went into the uh, Toronto Free Theatre. <laughs> Everybody said, this, this, this makes a, us look kind of rich, you know. <laughs> that's, that's the idea. So, so let me get that again. The original highest balcony seats from the Royal Alex they were ripped out and shipped to some they were so movie theater in Western Ontario. Some little town. And then they came back to Toronto and became the seats of the Toronto Free Theater. That's right. Classy. Small world. Classy. Yeah. Now, when you say very casually you put together forty or 50000 in 1972, that's a lot of money. That's, yeah. that's probably 300000 now, 400000 well, so how do you put together that money? You say it so easily. I well, I, I, well, Judith and I like loaned the company uh, ten or fifteen thousand, and then we said we've started this off, off, and we hope to get it back. But if we don't say la guerre, how about helping us out? Right. So I just went to all, all my friends and said, "Come on," and uh, they were generous about it. Some were on the on the board. Adrian Clarkson was one of them, and uh, they were just people I knew, you know. Right. So, uh, and they helped out as much as they could. And, and what was the first show here? Do you remember? It was the uh, one that I wrote. It was called "How Are Things with the Walking Wounded." Directed by Kinch. Yep, absolutely, and. Uh, on opening night, the guys from the lip thing turned up, and they were at uh, intermission. And I, I had to go to a couple of freak friends of mine and say, 
the man is here and I got to give him and his friend a seat, okay? Oh, so some free theater, right? <laughs> anyway, I gave him seats. And uh, at the intermission, we were out having weed and uh, ciggy. And uh, I said, well, you see, they came and to the guy who said they wouldn't come. Well, for Christ's sake, of course they came. It's free for Jack, Christ's sake. Wow. <laughs> I said, ah, Canadian double think. Ah, right. And what did he think of giving government money through a lip grant to a bunch of whatever, theater artists and... The big thing was that we kept good books. Oh, really? Because I'm a chartered accountant, you see. Right. And so I made sure we had really good books. And uh, I remember when the uh, lip auditor came in and said, uh, I'm here for the lip you know, audit. And I said, oh, okay, here's the book. You have books. <laughs> And what were the conditions on these lipograms? Well, if you said you were going to hire 20 people at $100, you know, whatever, per week, but you did it. And were they arts-directed grants, or you could be sewing t-shirts, or...? Oh, and they had all kinds of things. Uh, in fact, a lot of the uh, lip groups, we had eventually a big uh, lip uh, organization of uh, uh, people representing all the groups, and tons of them were Portuguese uh, cleaning ladies, you know, who needed somebody to look after their kids right. when they were... And what was the political purpose behind the lip grants? Jobs. Job creation? Yeah, it was had been noted that uh, particular parts of the society, like Portuguese and whatnot, uh, were not well employed, and youth were not well employed. So anything that was for people, you know, not under 25, let's say, was golden. Right. And and there was another one. Then there was this, uh, this one in the summer, uh, and uh, and it was aimed completely at, at youth. And what was the kind of uh, contribution range of the grants? You know. Uh, I have no idea really, but I would suggest probably we were one of the uh, larger ones, you know. I, I think probably they got things up to 250000 or so, yeah. Right. And a lot of them, they were uh, administered by unions and went on who are more Catholic than the Pope, you know, when it comes to keeping records. Right. And do you think the LIP program was successful? I think so. Oh, sure. But no government now would ever do a program like that. No. Not what we've got. Yeah. But uh, if we get back to having a, a government that I would be happy about, we, we probably could, you know. Right. Because they recognize that they could not depend on, on big companies getting behind, you know, creating jobs for people.